Hey guys, welcome into the DNVR Rockies podcast recorded live in the Toyota Lounge here at the DNVR Bar. I'm your host, Susie Hunter, and I'm joined by Tiff, who is producing today. Hello, oh, Tiff. Oh, hi, friends. How's it going? How are you doing? Oh, just lovely. Just hanging out on the. Just hanging it's out. It's my Friday. This is your Friday. It's I guess this Friday. is kind of my Friday, too. Yeah, so. It's been a T- long TGI, week, of course. It's been a long week. <laughs> it's been a long week, of course. It's been a long also, week we. We've just gotten word that there are some Australians who are Nuggets fans who are here and at the bar. We love our Australians. Dedicated. We love when people come to visit us from Super across dedicated. the... dedicated. So many Australians come to visit us. I know. New Zealanders, Australians. Yeah, so That's many. That's such a long flight. Yeah. I've never just gone to us. Australia for anything. I'd like to say it's just for us, but it's probably for like the sports teams. Yeah. But... I'm- I think we're adjacent to that. I'm like, I won't even go to, like, Lakewood for stuff. No. No, no, this is fun. I love when people come to visit. Obviously, they're not here for the Rockies. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I'm here for the Rockies. You guys are here for the Rockies. Uh, uh, Tiff's here for the Rockies. Ow. Did you hear that? I did. I moved my hand so much, and I just injured myself. I'm going to be fine. We're going to reel it in. Guys, if you are watching us live on YouTube, hop in the Toyota chat. We will answer all of your questions. We will address all your comments as long as they're respectful. Everyone's been pretty respectful since we blocked some disrespectful people. Drop a like. It happens. Drop a like. Drop a comment. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot to talk about after this Arizona series. Rockies won one of two. I was really hoping they were going to win today because I predicted on Sunday's show, I was like, oh, Rockies are going to take two of three. And they were really damn close to taking today's game. They were pretty close to taking Tuesday's game, too. We'll get into that in just a second, but... Overall, let's uh, our impressions of this most recent series. Um, here's a stat. Here's a stat. It's not a nice stat, but it's a stat. The Rockies haven't won two games in a row since September of 2023, and that was when they had that five game streak from uh, Dece- or from September 12th to September 16th, and that was the longest winning streak of the year for the Rockies. So it might take a little bit for these guys to get going. I really hope it doesn't. But the Rockies are now 5-15 and 15 versus the Diamondbacks since 2023. The Diamondbacks have our number. And it really seems that way, too. Also, sidebar, Christian Walker, who I am so happy we don't have to see for a little bit, he has a 24-game on-base streak against the Rockies. That man is always getting a hit. And if he's not getting a hit, he's getting a walk. He's always on base. It's it's crazy. Hey, we've got some guys hitting really well. Uh, Tovar has a 12-game on base streak. Ryan McMahon has one of the highest batting averages in baseball. But a lot of guys are pushing. They're pushing a little too hard, and we can see it. I think we're seeing it with KB. We're definitely seeing it with Nolan Jones. We talked to Buddy earlier today. We asked, do you think Nolan Jones is pushing? Just like immediately without hesitation. He was like, yes, he is. We'll hear from him in just a second. But, of course, we talked to Buddy about a lot of stuff. We talked to him after today's loss. And today's loss was kind of similar to some other losses that we've seen kind of recently. We're missing just a few key pieces. But are we ready to play that Bud Black postgame sound? All right, here's what Buddy had to say today. Well, I mean, just the key hit. I mean, we're we're getting in position. We didn't we didn't get a lot of hits today, but uh, we had some opportunities. You know, a couple different times to to catch the lead. Uh, <clears throat> just didn't happen, right? I mean, it's there. Uh, you know, today, uh, you know, they got the they got the hit, right? <clears throat> the Suarez off the end of the bat, broken bat, looper down the line. That's eluded us, you know, the big hit. So the worm will turn. Uh, we'll get our hits. We got, <clears throat> we got a number of guys who are not, you know, hitting to their standard. Uh, and once that starts happening, I think you'll see some of those things turn our way, the big hit, the key hit. We just haven't gotten it. Yeah, so that we're going to talk about that in uh, just a second. Uh, but first, we do want to shout out our friends at Toyota. Your Front Ridge Toyota stores are so excited to begin this amazing partnership that 
they're going to have with us here at DNVR. Toyota is the official vehicle of DNVR. And I know a lot of our coworkers drive Toyotas every single day. But yeah, trucks have always been a part of Toyota's DNA. They've got, they're just, they, they, they can make these durable cars and they look good. And they're great for conquering off-road. And I don't really go off-road a lot, but I know that sometimes the roads get a little messy here in Denver. So great for that too. Great for hauling the weight of the world. You can do it all with the all-new 2024 Tacoma. And by the way, the Land Cruiser, the 2024 Land Cruiser coming this spring. Toyota's got 17 models available with all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, which we need here in Colorado. But Toyota also offers right now more low and zero emission vehicles combined than any other automaker. And that is sustainability, my friends. Listen, visit your front range Toyota stores at a location near you. AutoNation Toyota Arapaho and Centennial, Corwin Toyota in Boulder, Groove Toyota in Littleton, Mountain States Toyota in Denver, Stevenson Toyota East in Aurora, Stevenson Toyota West in Lakewood. And uh, as you know, Toyota, the official vehicle of the Colorado Rockies. Uh, let's talk about our friends at Bet365, hashtag never ordinary. That is their motto, and they are, they are living it. They are living it. They don't do ordinary. They believe every sport should be absolutely epic. Right now, new customers can choose between two offers when they open an account with Bet365. Use code DNVR365 to sign up. Deposit just $10, and you can choose between either a bet and get. Place a bet of $5 or more and get $150 in bonus bets or a first net safety offer by placing a bet up to $1,000. And if your qualifying bet loses, you'll receive a matched refund in bonus bets, whatever the sport, whatever the moment it is never ordinary with bet three, six, five. They got some good boosts going on Two, Um, uh, they have a great NBA early payout offer. Um, you can get your straight bets or your parlay selections marked as a winner when your team goes up by 20 points. And, uh, the, I, th I think the nuggets have done that a couple times. So you got that going for you. But with Bet365, you must be 21 or older, physically located in the state of Colorado. Please gamble responsibly. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. Use code DNVR365. Please bet responsibly. All right. Let's take it back to the start of this series first. That's where I want to go. That was the... The, the game they won, that was a fun win, too, for sure. They overcame a 4-1 deficit. That was their biggest comeback from behind victory so far this season. And, you know, it was the end of a bad streak. Uh, it, was the <laughs> it was the first time the Rockies actually managed to score first in uh, so many games. I think it was 16 games we got up to, 15 games. It was, yeah, it's, it's not fun. It's not easy to, not easy to win games when you're already starting behind and the Rockies started ahead and, and they won the game. So they are, they are living that truth right there. We saw the return of Kyle Freeland, his first start at Coors Field and uh, Kyle Freeland. So, so much better when he's back in his natural habitat here at a mile high, but five innings pitch. So basically also before that outing on Monday, he had pitched five and two thirds on the whole season through two starts. So he almost doubled his inning count, but five innings pitched six hits, four runs. Two of those were earned more on that in a sec. If you missed it, two walks, two strikeouts. So he didn't get the win in this game. He didn't get the loss, but a secret third thing, neither. We saw Peter Lambert. Um, Peter Lambert came in long reliever. He is just embracing this role right now. He did not allow a run in those two innings. He's pitched two innings in his last three outings, by the way. And he's been, he's been great, great as a long reliever out of the pen. We were talking to buddy about this a little bit too, cause we got to chat with him this morning and, uh, someone asked, you know, how is Peter Lambert liking this long reliever role when, uh, you know, he's been a starter. And Buddy was like, listen, if you ask any guy, would you rather be a starter in the minors or a long reliever in the majors? They're going to pick the majors. They're going to pick the majors. And honestly, glad he's here because Peter Lambert has been so valuable 
t- eating up those innings. Uh, Monday also, Jake Bird, his first career save. He has never gotten the save in the 12 save opportunities he has had previously. So Jake Bird, first career save on Monday. Pretty fun stuff. Let me check the Toyota chat real fast because I see some friends in there. What do we have? All right. RK in the chat. Buddy has to start batting KB down the lineup until he finds a groove again. Too many outs with guys on base when we need a clutch hit. That is a really good point, and we've seen that exact situation so many times this series, so many times this homestand. I, and, you know, Buddy moves the lineup around all the time. He moved it around a lot today. I don't think there's anything wrong with putting KB a little further down. I think maybe... Maybe it would be better for everyone. RK also. So the Rockies are undefeated when scoring first this year. That is the only bright spot. No, we've got other bright spots. Okay, let's reel it in for a second. And uh, Trenton in the chat says a lot about Arizona. If they have lost multiple games to Colorado already, they've lost two. I don't, I don't know. The D-backs are pretty good, although they do have a losing record right now. Eh. I don't know. I don't know if I'm following you here. If you want to elaborate in the Toyota chat, feel free. Also, Trenton adding Kyle looked way better. Can tell he was way more locked in. He was so locked in. So locked in. Also, it was so, it's so funny to me. Kyle, we know how intense he is. There was a close-up shot on him after he came out after, after doing that fifth inning of work. He looked furious. And yeah, he gave up a couple of hits, gave up a couple of runs. He looked like he had as bad of an outing as he did the first two, which I thought was so funny. He holds himself to a high standard. Uh, I'm happy that he had a much better start here in Denver. And also, he like knocked about 10 points off his ERA with that start on Monday. So that was pretty good. That's pretty good. That number got a little too high. It was 27, a 27 ERA heading into Monday's game. I think it's like 16 and change right now, but let's still talking about Monday here. The offense, this was, this is what we need to win. Obviously we need more bats. We need bigger hits, Monday, 13 hits, seven runs, and Charlie Blackman kicked it off with a leadoff double. That is how you start ahead. That was the first inning, and then, of course, Tovar, Ezekiel Tovar, brought him home with a hit. But also, Charlie Blackman homered in that eighth inning to give us tacos. Thank you. Also, Ryan McMahon left this game hit in 415. He's, he's had a pretty good batting average. He's got one of the best batting averages in Major League Baseball right now. But the flip side, that game, we did not see Rymack at his best at third. He had a very costly error in the fourth inning that caused those two runs. Some other good things defensively. Some good things defensively moving on. Alaris Montero, unassisted double play in the seventh. Nolan Jones ran down a ball in the fourth to probably save another run. It was still a sack fly, but kept it at a sack fly. And that was huge because it really went towards that corner. And we saw, especially in Wednesday's game, how dangerous that corner is. The corner giveth, the corner taketh away. So... That was Monday game, that five or that seven five win over Arizona. The only win we got this series. Tuesday, Tuesday. Oh my gosh, so close. This was also low scoring game, three to two loss. Cal Quantrill got the start. Six innings pitch, seven hits, three runs all earned, no walks. Yes, six strikeouts. He got his first quality start of the season. And it was the third quality start from a Rocky starter. Quality starts. So back. So back. But yeah, gave up a couple of solo homers. But um, the most strikeouts Cal has had since last season with his with his old team. We got to talk about the pen, though. Victor Vodnik in that Tuesday game, extended his scoreless streak. It's the longest scoreless stretch he's had in his career. It's a pretty short career. I mean, he debuted last year, but still. He hasn't allowed a run in 
his last 10 and two thirds innings. And that goes back to September, the last series at Coors Field last year. We did see, hey, old friend Randall Grichik hit his ho- first home run of the season. So nice of Rockies pitching to do that for an old friend. What a lovely welcome home. So, yeah, we mentioned uh, as of Wednesday. Pre- okay, so like before this game start, before Wednesday's game, Ryan McMahon actually did have the highest batting average in the majors, which was pretty nice. On the flip side, Nolan Jones. Nolan Jones, we keep, we're, we're seeing him pressing. It's, it's so frustrating for him. It's so frustrating for us. It's definitely more frustrating for him. Brenton Doyle, though. Brenton Doyle has been so productive. He was pretty productive on Tuesday. He went two for three. He had, he had his fourth multi-hit game of the season, which is so impressive, especially for him, too, because that was the one piece he had to work on so much. Elias Diaz, he had a... He still has because he wasn't in the lineup today. He has a five-game hit streak. And that was his third multi-hit game of the year, too. So that was pretty fun. Pretty fun stuff. Unfortunately, not fun enough. Let's revisit the Toyota chat, shall we? All right. Trenton in the chat. That 95 mile per hour out he threw to first was definitely a clue. He was feeling frustrated a bit. Yes, he took it out on the ball. RK, there's a few guys locked in, but an equal amount that are locked out. I'm not going to say locked out. I'm just going to say unlocked. They're unlocked right now, and they got to lock it in. Uh, Let's see. Burge in the chat. Hey, Burge. Speaking of Jake Bird, he gets to visit his old friend Bryce Harper next week. That's right. We'll talk about the we'll preview the Philly series a little more, maybe in a later show, because also uh, I had a great conversation with Nolan Jones earlier today about his feelings heading in because that's his hometown. So we got one guy heading to his hometown. Another guy almost got his head ripped off by Bryce Harper. It's wild. It's wild. Can't wait. Can't wait. Luigi, the Toyota chat, you say. Now I want a Toyota. Wow. Clip that, Tiff. Clip it. Clip it. Clip it. (laughs) I love Toyotas. Who doesn't? Who wouldn't love a Toyota? If you don't, you're lying. All right. Yeah. Great. Such a fun series here at Coors Field this week. A lot of ups, a lot of downs. But if you want to focus on the, the downs in terms of how much you're paying for tickets, you should check out our friends at Game Time because Game Time is going to take the guesswork out of getting tickets. You're going to save so much more even when you wait so close to first pitch. They've got great last minute deals, all in prices. I love that you can see the view from your seats. And they have a really cool deal for baseball. But the, by the way, um, uh, this is your warning. This, you've only got a couple days to use this deal. You can take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. And for a limited time, all users can get $20 off any MLB purchase of $150 or more in the game time app with code first pitch, all caps, one word, first pitch. Some terms do apply, but that's first pitch for $20 off from now through April 14th. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I guarantee I'm going to have a Breck brew after this because they're our OG. They're our first beer and they're the official craft beer of DNVR. Tiff, by the way, how were all the Breck shows on Monday? Oh, so fun. Good. It was a little chaotic, which always happens. Yeah. But, you know, we settled in and it was a blast. Remote shows are always chaotic, no matter who you are. Yes. You could be in the business for decades. Remote shows are still crazy. Something will always, if, if it can go wrong, it won't go wrong. I think that's a law. Well, I thought the shows all looked great, so. I'm glad you watched. Yeah, of course. How could I? How could I? All right. Anyway, 
Reel it in, Sue's. Breck Brew, they got a beer for any occasion. No better way to watch a game or recover from a game than with an ice cold Breck Brew. But they got the Avalanche Amber, the Mile High City Golden, the Broncos Country Pale Ale, the Fun Slinger, the Good Company Hard Seltzer. Find your favorite brew near you. Use the beer locator at breckbrew.com. <clears throat> Let's bring it to today. Let's bring it to today. Game three of this Arizona series. Austin Gomber. Austin Gomber was just fine. He wasn't, <clears throat> he wasn't Gomby. He wasn't the Gombest, but he was Gomber. He was good. He was good. The pitching line on him, six hits, two runs. Both of those earned, allowed two walks, four strikeouts, that one solo home run. He's got a 4.91 ERA on the season. He threw 98 pitches in those six innings, 61 of them for strikes. Tovar was hitting leadoff today. That was pretty fun. He had a single in the first. He had a double in the second. True leadoff. I, we loved Tovar hitting leadoff today. It was pretty good. And, uh, I mean, we were talking to Buddy after the game, of course. And, uh, you know, people were like, well, should we be seeing Tovar hitting leadoff more? And he's like, well, you know, he's kind of as high as he's going to go. Charlie Blackman's also a pretty good leadoff hitter. So, you know, he'll, he'll probably be just right behind him, at least for the time being, which I think is pretty fun. Uh, Alaris Montero. RBI single to get the Rocks tied because, of course, they did not score first <laughs> in this economy. <laughs> uh, Michael Tolia also two-run homer in the fourth as a righty, which was fun. He has been great on both sides of the plate. <clears throat> we had a very interesting conversation with him about being a switch hitter and how you'll go through – slumps on one side or slumps on the other but he feels like it's really clicking on both sides for him right now I thought that was so fascinating what else do we have? oh yeah so on that two-run homer Brendan Rodgers had re reached base on an error he has not been hitting as much as we would like we did get a double from him that went into that right field corner Chris Bryant though oh my gosh he had such a big hit in that third inning and it was just a little short. And I think, like, even I was a little tricked by it. I thought, oh, is this just going to get out? And it didn't. Chris Bryant. Poor guy. Chris Bryant also, full count Chris Bryant in the bottom of the ninth inning stresses me out so much these days. Because, again, he, I think he's one of those guys that, that also might be pressing a little too hard. I don't know, but it's not working because he is striking out in so many of these big moments with guys on base. But anyway, all right. So we've got some, let's bring it back to Nolan Jones because Nolan Jones also having so many struggles at the plate right now, especially, but we were talking to buddy. i mentioned earlier, we asked him if he was pressing immediately. He was like, yes, yes. Nolan Jones is. So uh, are we ready to play that? All right, so here is what Buddy had to say about Nolan Jones in this current state of his right now. Well, you see, I mean, it's going to ultimately up to Nolan. I mean, he's getting a, he's getting a lot of coaching, uh, you know, obviously from the coaching staff, from his teammates. You know, everybody's trying to help him because he's, I mean, he's such a guy that cares a lot and, you know, really wants to be a, a, a big contributor. And that, sometimes yeah, that gets in the way, right, of trying to do too much, and he falls into that trap. He had a very successful year last year. Uh, you know, once he <clears throat> once he got called up and settled down in Albuquerque after really trying super hard in spring training to make the team, uh, he exhaled. What we need him to do now is exhale and play. Uh, you know, we're seeing it at times during the course of the game, uh, but we're not seeing the complete exhale, uh, playing relaxed, uh, having fun. I mean, there's a, there's a combination of being focused and intense, but also relaxed at the same time. I mean, it's, you know, that's, that's a, it's the trick of, you know, the, the players who do that are the good ones, are the successful ones. we got to get them into that space. Yeah, so that was actually, we were talking about this pregame too. Obviously, we saw a lot of the same from him. He is still just kind of stuck right now. 
in this place where he has a lot of pressure on him. We talked to him very briefly about this post game. This is also my least favorite time to do an interview because you could just tell, you can see how emotional he is. He just, he's had so many bad days at work and everyone sees it. And it's really frustrating. He cares so much. He's out there working his ass off every day. So it was, it was tough to talk to him and see him like this. But we asked him, though, about, we referred to our conversation, but that exact conversation with Buddy about him pressing. And here's what Nolan Jones had to say. Yeah, I mean, what I, it is? I mean, I definitely think it's in there. Um, it's, yeah, it's been tough for me so far. Um, I'm working every day. Um, and I know it's going to come, but it's, uh, it's very frustrating. Yeah. Did you see it? Like, it's just like, I know I hate it. I, I'm just going to put out. So I love me. I'm going to start making like crazy predictions. I think one of my predictions is Nolan Jones is going to Homer in Philly back home. That'd be fun. I think he will. Yeah. I think he will. I think the Philly series could be very chaotic in a very fun way. As Philly series always are. Um, uh, all right. Let's bring it back to Wednesday's game. Uh, Tovar was great, by the way. Three for five, a double, a run scored. Justin Lawrence had a very, very bad time out there. So uh, he came in for that ninth inning. And we saw a lot of base traffic. And uh, really, I mean, we were tied going into this ninth inning. We, I say we, the Rockies were tied. We're very invested, as you can see. Rockies were tied heading into this game. Justin Lawrence, into this game, into this inning. Hi, I'm sorry, it's been a long day. I'll start the whole sentence over, okay? Rockies were tied heading into that ninth inning. Right away, leadoff walk. And then another walk. And then a double that scored two runs. And that double also went right into that left field corner. The corners giveth, the corners taketh away. So that is where it all kind of fell apart. The Rockies were not able to answer those runs. We did get, we saw some hits. We saw some hits. Charlie Blackman uh, came in to pinch hit. He did not hit. Uh, but Ezekiel Tovar could not stop hitting. He got a little single and then Ryan McMahon drew a walk and then a strikeout from uh, who's next. Yeah. Chris Bryant struck out that full count. Very frustrating. Jake cave drew a walk. Jake cave has uh, in these ninth inning situations where he is pitch hitting. He has drawn walks in these uh, very long at bats. But he's had some really good at bats, even where he doesn't get the hit. He's just, he's been very patient at the plate. He's a vet. He knows what he's doing. But then, of course, Nolan Jones was up next. The bases were loaded at this point, too. So, like, the game could have gone so many different ways. And that last at bat, of course, had to come down to Nolan Jones. And uh, he, uh, he, he couldn't get it done. He couldn't get it done. It was a fly out to center. That was it. It was, it was pretty frustrating. For all of us, for all of us. But of course, that is why Nolan Jones was feeling the way he felt after this game. I would too. It's just, it's tough to watch. You feel bad. No one wants to see this. But yeah, Rockies, six hits, three runs, one homer. Yeah. Yeah, let's check the chat. Let's check the Toyota chat because y'all are, y'all are chatty. First of all, Steve, thank you. Susie, keeping it positive. Luigi, I was at the Colorado Convention Center in 92 when they announced the Rockies officially. Wow. And OG, welcome to the chat. We love to talk to an OG. <clears throat> oh, that is cool. All right. What else do we have? What else do we have? Trenton in the chat, bro. KB's long fly ball as well. Maybe another foot or two and it was out. Not even. I mean, if it was just a little higher, it would have been out. It was very sad. We were, we were all kind of holding our breath watching that one. And then it just didn't go out. Trenton in the chat. Jones is having so many costly mishaps in the field as well. He makes that catch. That top of the ninth is over. That was a tough catch though. That would have been a miracle of a catch. I, 
don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm being, maybe I'm being too kind. Let me know in the Toyota chat. Trenton also adding it's tough. Love Jones and KB, but they are kind of on the struggle bus. They are on the struggle bus. They're on the struggle bus together though. I mean, we've heard from Nolan Jones a bunch that, you know, obviously he's had a lot of very bad games so far in the first 13 games of the season. But I mean, he keeps telling us like, at least this team has my back. Like they are here for me for all of these bad moments. Like we're all going to get through it. He's like, I know I've got it in me. I just got to find it. <laughs> I feel bad. I feel so bad. What else do we have in the Toyota chat? Let's see. All right. Luigi in the chat. Not a chance that we stand by. Until they, I don't get it. Oh, I'm missing context. And by me is like the quintessential song mm. for the Rockies. And so Luigi is saying, Got not a it. chance that we stand by them until oh, they ooh. turn the beat around. Okay. Look how, look how metaphorical you're getting. Trend in the chat. Jones makes that play and he's on ESPN top 10. Yeah, he would have been. He, you know what? I will say. Let's bring it back to the field. Brenton Rogers had a crazy catch in the sixth inning. He entered the inning too. Okay. So it was just this wild diving catch, like near the first baseline. He like rolls over on the grass and then throws to first on his back. It was giving Nolan Arnato. It was giving. It ended the inning, that's for sure. But wait, we have a... <laughs> we, <laughs> Tiff, okay, so Tiff was uh, kind enough to make a score graphic. And she was like, oh, should we use this picture? And I'm like, you know what? I don't know. It might be a little much. But here's the picture anyway. This is... All right. So yeah, he is just... He's splayed out. <laughs> he caught the ball. He's ready to throw it. It was wild. I'm like, also, can't believe he made that throw. Can't believe the throw. I could never. This, this, a play like this would kill me. <laughs> I would, I would never walk again if I were to attempt something like this. Yeah, that was fun. That was a fun time. A fun time. You know what else is a fun time, Tiff? Going out to eat with your friends at Illegal Pizza. I am due for a pizza trip, by the way. There was a time. There was. There have been weeks where I've eaten Illegal Pizza every single day of the week. But Illegal Pete's, they are our good friends. But hey, this Friday, by the way, the Nuggets crew is going to be at the Illegal Pete's in Lodo for a pregame happy hour and a merch pop-up. You can get your hands on our Nuggets playoff shirt early. Oh my gosh. The, this playoff, the new playoff shirt. You can grab it early more than, but you know, before all your friends do. Show them up. Why not? Yeah. Also, there's a and there's an illegal pizza in Wheat Ridge now. So you got a friend in the burrito business. Yeah. Anyway, illegal pizza. It's your spot for burritos, buddies, and beer. And for me, it's my spot for reverse nachos. Yes. So fun. Yum. So fun. I had nachos at the game today. I did not have sunflower seeds. But you can have some flower seeds. You can, you got to get hooked up from our friends at Chinook Cedary. These are, these are the craziest sunflower seed flavors that you're going to find on the market. So but like good. in a good way. So in, good. In a good way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, of course you can get just like the original sunflower seed. They've got lemon pepper. They've got jalapeno ranch, Parmesan and pepper, smokehouse barbecue, hatch chili, dill pickle, cinnamon toast. What? Crazy. How do they do it? How do they and do also, it? they have the largest seeds on the market, too. And you're not going to have sandpaper tongue, no salty burn. You can eat these seeds all day long without tearing up your mouth. You're a sunflower seed girly, right, Tiff? I am. I've, like, quite literally been munching on these all day because I don't know how to pack myself a lunch <laughs> when I come here. So sunflower <laughs> seeds have been my lunch today. Um, okay. And so no sore mouth, no, like, over saltiness, no chapped lips, no dehydration. I was going to say, you look very hydrated. Yeah. Feel great. Feel great. 
All right, so Tiff is running on seeds right now from Chinook Seedery because we, we've got the whole sampler here in the office. You can get a sampler pack and try all eight of their flavors. Head over to ChinookSeedery.com. Use code Rockies for 20% off your order of the best seeds ever. Luigi, thank you for complimenting my transition. I am working on them, okay? I'm working on them. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. It's just like baseball. It's just like baseball. All right. Where are we at time-wise? How long have we been at this? Oh, 35 minutes. I don't want to keep you all much longer, but let's just get into some other some other game notes. Charlie Blackman, he's at 755 career RBI. That's as of pregame today. Just five shy of tying Nolan Arenado for fourth most in Rockies history. Also, good news, Nolan, Nolan Jones no longer leading Major League Baseball in errors. Ellie De La Cruz is at five errors now, so Nolan Jones can rest easy knowing that he does not have the most because that was a tough couple of games. Tough couple of games. Hey, some more good news. We don't have to see the Diamondbacks again until August 12th. We saw them so much in the past week, and we don't have to see them again until August, which I am relieved about. I will not miss Christian Walker. I will not miss mixing up Jock Peterson and Jace Peterson on my score sheet. I don't like that combo. It's too confusing. I don't know why more people aren't talking about it. Is it just me who's confused? Let me know in the Toyota chat. <laughs> Some Rockies related news that I know a lot of people at Coors Field were very excited about today. Jackson Holiday. Happy Jackson Holiday debut day to those who observe. And of course, that is very observed at Coors Field because he was the Coors Field toddler. And by the way, shout out to Danielle Allentuck, who used to do such a great job covering the Rockies. She does a great job covering the Orioles now. She brought it back to her Rockies roots. She talked to so many people in the Rockies organization, so many former players that saw Jackson Holiday as a little kid and just compiled these great childhood stories of him. The kid was a little baller, even as a toddler. It was a great story. And uh, there's a link to it. I think we retweeted it. So I, I just, I highly recommend reading it because it was great. And, you know, I think right now, is that game even? I have no idea what time any game is right now. But we'll talk about his debut a lot more on Friday. Next show is going to be Friday at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, by the way. Game won't be over because they're going to be they're going to be in Toronto, Toronto. That'll be fun. So yeah, the Rockies haven't been to Toronto in such a long time. I think they were supposed to go in 2020. So a lot of people who work for the Rockies and cover the Rockies are especially excited about Toronto because I think for a lot of people, it's the final ballpark that a lot of them haven't been to yet. Just because the team doesn't go there that much. Now they will every other year. But I think for Patrick Saunders, too, that was his last ballpark that he had to get to. I'm going to try to get him on the show next week oh, or when he fun. gets back yeah. so we could talk all about it. Because as you know, I've been to all 30. He'll have to have a nacho take. Yes. Actually, I don't know if I don't think I had nachos, but I had like the Canadian version version, which is poutine. Poutine. Yeah. For poutine. Sure. We love poutine. Hey, Trenton in the chat. So happy for Jackson. Well deserved. I love that they made him wait like a week and a half because he was probably so frustrated. Like, no, how did I not make this team? What is going on? Uh, and he's there now. Uh, the Orioles did have to DFA Tony Kemp. But he said some really nice things about Jackson on Twitter, which I thought class act, class act right there. Uh, Luigi in the chat. I live in Phoenix. Um, I've got great seats for the game in August. That's good. That's good. Enjoy that August weather in that cover. Thank God it's a covered ballpark because August is not okay weather. <laughs> it's not like weather that should exist on this planet. Yet here we are. Yet here we are. Oh, Steve in the chat. 
Oh, wow. No, I'm not going to read that one. <laughs> but Trent says, that's a W picture. I believe we're talking about the only picture we showed in the show, which is Brendan Rogers making a crazy catch. Oh, my gosh. I don't know. I haven't zoomed in on it. I'm a little afraid to. Luigi in the chat on a plus side. Your nails are on point. You were married to a salon owner. Can you get me a deal? <laughs> <laughs> Were are you got are y'all on good terms? Let me know in the Toyota chat. <laughs> All right, I think you know what I think we've heard enough. I think we've heard enough. The show's gonna be back on Friday. We're gonna start. We're gonna call it like our little seventh inning stretch show. It's gonna start around seven o'clock. Guess who's coming back? Steph's coming back. Steph's gonna join the show. We're gonna watch the Rockies game together. All of us. <laughs> And it'll be a good time. It'll be a good time. And then, of course, we will be live after the finale of the series in Toronto on Sunday, too. So just like, yeah, mark your calendars. <laughs> Get the YouTube tab open. Like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. All right. That's my, that's my piece. Tiff, my peaceful queen, where Hello. can we follow you on Twitter? Um, I am at Tiffany with an I underscore Tano on all platforms. On all platforms. I'm at the Susie Hunter on all platforms. Uh, I share my scorecards. If that is of value to you, you can see my handwriting. And the weird way I keep score. Apparently, I keep score weird. No one ever taught me. I just kind of like learned. And I just do it for me to keep track of what happened in the game. I, why am I defending myself here? Very defensive all of a sudden. I don't know. I'm in a weird mood. <laughs> go home. A, take a nap. I need to go home. I need to go home. All right, guys. Let's bring it home. Make sure you are following all of the latest Rockies news at DNVR underscore Rockies on Twitter. Follow us at DNVR underscore sports on Instagram too, because the social boys post about the Rockies. They do actually a lot. Yay. All right. And uh, that's all. You know what I like to say, Tiff, about closing out a show like this? What do you like to say, Suze? I say, that's baseball. That's the show. We'll talk to you on Friday at 7 o'clock Mountain Time, but have a great week. We all silly like the mayor. 